From Mark's gospel, hear these words. From noon until three in the afternoon, the whole earth was dark. At three, Jesus cried out with a loud shout, Aloe, Aloe, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you left me? After hearing him, some standing there said, look, he is calling Elijah. Someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine and put it on a pole, and he offered it to Jesus to drink, saying, let's see if Elijah will come and take him down. But Jesus let out a loud cry and died. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing Jesus saw how he died, he said, this man was certainly a son of God. May God's blessing be added to the reading and the understanding of the word. Big holiday coming up, right? Halloween, our national holiday, international holiday. They do it around the world now. I'm thinking that, you know, Easter's getting pushed back and maybe we need to start dressing up for Easter and putting out lights, you know? Easter lights, can you see this? Although we have had people in bunny costumes around here. But maybe, yeah. What's the appeal of Halloween? What's the appeal of Halloween? Candy, come on, let's be honest. It's candy, you go off your diet, just in time for Thanksgiving. Mm. And then there's the great Halloween controversy, Milky Way versus Snickers, right? Oh, yeah, we'll have to take a vote on that. I'm, you know, torn. I like, as long as it's got caramel in it, I'm happy. But I'm also a dark chocolate fan, so that makes me just crazy. Have you ever looked at the nutritional value of candy bars? Well, this one, this is actually fun size, so there is no nutrition on it. You have to look at the big package it comes in, the nutritional label for candy bars. It, it's kind of quick read, less than 2% of anything <laughs> of good value to you. Yeah, the minimum daily requirement. That's, that's why this year, instead of candy, I'm giving out cereal boxes to the children. Look at this, you can get 100% of your B vitamins, your C vitamins, your niacin, your riboflavin, and 10% of the phosphorus so they glow in the dark. <laughs> what is niacin? Is that made up? I don't think that's real. I think they just put that on there. I'm not sure. What about other stuff? The minimum daily requirement of other stuff. We know what it is for all these vitamins. What about other things? Minimum daily requirement of chicken wings. You know, I like hot sauce. It's good for me. Keeps me awake. Green chili. There should be a minimum daily requirement of green chili. I think that's good. Ice cream. Why not? Ice cream makes you smile. You think about that. When people are depressed, what do they do? They get out the ice cream. Who needs so loft? <laughs> other stuff other than food, other than food. Minimum daily requirement of music. You should have the choir come to your house and sing every morning. <coughs> All right, maybe not. <laughs> Minimum daily requirement of hockey. Now that hockey season is on, I get to watch my hockey game every night. And now that that baseball thing is over. Okay, I have to admit, that, that game six was exciting. I went to, the, to bed at the end of the ninth inning because I had had my minimum daily requirement of baseball. But still, that was exciting. Cat and dog time. If you're a pet person, you know, when we went away on vacation, I found a cat in Ireland just to have a little cat time. Kind of reduce the blood. You get minimum daily requirement of pet time. Uh... Minimum daily requirement of Facebook time. So all sorts of people who need that. Or maybe just FaceTime. FaceTime with someone important, friend time, family time. What else? What else? Minimum daily requirement. Minimum daily requirement of prayer. Is there one? Minimum daily requirement of worship. If you get 70 minutes on a Sunday, then is that too much? Huh? Minimum daily requirement of giving, of service to others. 
Minimum daily requirement of God, is, is there such a thing? A minimum daily requirement of God. We need a government study to find out. The minimum though, really? Is that what we're striving for, the minimum? A minimum daily requirement? Strive for the very least a bit of God that we, that we need? Is that how it works? Is that our response to God to seek out the bare minimum necessary and no more, lest we should miss some of the football game? I think that's our thinking. That's, that's Old Testament thinking, really. That's Old Testament thinking. God is to be feared and avoided. Because, you know, the Old Testament, I am a man of unclean lips and I live among a people of unclean lips. The prophet cries out, oh Lord, don't look upon me. Don't let me see the face of God for surely I will die if I see the face of God. Mere mortals are not meant to be in the presence of the holy. That's Old Testament thinking. That's the way. We don't even like talking about God. So when we go to parties, you avoid religion and politics. And clergy gatherings, we don't talk about God. We talk about you people. And music directors. Boy, such a... I get to brag. <laughs> Mark's gospel, Jesus dies on the cross, agonizing hours, and finally he breathes his last. And then this, is, this verse, and then the curtain in the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, it says. Torn in two. What's going on there? That curtain was in the center of the temple, surrounding the Holy of Holies, the place where only once a year, only the high priest could go. That's where the Ark of the Covenant was kept, the footstool of God. That's where God was. And you couldn't go in there. You would die, only the high priest, only once a year. And then Jesus dies and that curtain is torn into top to bottom. What's going on there? Is God coming out or are we allowed in? Either way, either way, something changes drastically in the world. Christ dies, the curtain is torn, and we are allowed to be in God's presence. No longer is death the sentence for looking upon the face of God, but rather life is the sentence for seeing God. Minimum daily requirement of God implies that we're keeping God at a safe distance. We're limiting our dosage. You don't want too much God. I mean, maybe there are people for whom the maximum of God is out there. There's some people, yeah, who live that way. Monks and hermits who go away and spend all their time contemplating God, and I guess they can do that, and that's okay for them. But for most of us, the maximum of God is almost as dangerous. But what's the minimum? Do you get that? And maybe in between, there's an optimum amount of God in your life. It's like this. You can have candy and get the minimum. You can have cereal, get the maximum, or maybe you get fruit, which you notice they haven't put labels on fruit to tell you what's in it. Apple contains apple, may contain other fruits, not from concentrate. Maybe there's an optimum in our relationship with God, but that's scary. The scariest thing that church can do is have us face to face with God. The scariest thing the church can do is call us to look honestly at ourselves in the light of the holy. When God is there in our lives, God comes to us through the gift of the Christ and we don't want to see that. Because that's frightening. All of our flaws, all of our blemishes, all of our brokenness are there. 
And that's the scariest thing the church can do, bring us face to face with God. And then we see our lives in the light of the holy and we see the times we're petty and selfish and annoying and mean-spirited and hurtful and all of us do it, me included, and we don't like to see that. We don't like to see that. But the good news is to come face to face with God acknowledges the divine within, that we are creatures of God, that we are created with divine purpose, with holiness and light inside of us, that we are made little less than God. The divine spark is within us, and we can be powerful and beautiful and whole and holy to acknowledge the divine spark and then to come into the body of Christ and to acknowledge the communal divine that is us that goes out and does the things that we do that feeds and clothes and visits all the things that we are called to do. And so it's no longer frightening to come face to face with God because we are loved and we love, and God overlooks and forgives our faults and our flaws and our selfishness and our pettiness and our greediness. God overlooks it and says, well done, good and faithful servant. You are loved. What more do you want? So don't go looking for the minimum daily requirement of God but find the optimum amount of God in your life, in your church, in your home, in your family, in your community, in your country, in your world. Find the optimum and live as people of joy. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, sometimes it is hard for us. We would like to wall ourselves off to protect ourselves. And yet, we are loved, we are forgiven, we are offered abundant life. Let us, God, rejoice in the gift of the Christ, that we might look upon your face with rejoicing. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.